welcome to this week's collective worship. I hope you're all well. And how are you managing to show that value of service that we've been thinking about this term so far? We begin this week on a journey. I wonder whether any of you can recognise this island that is in the very eastern side of the Mediterranean Sea. Welcome to Cyprus. We're going to a place called Salamis. Why are we going here, you might ask? Well, to help us understand, I spoke to someone from my church who has actually been there. Okay, David, it's good to have you join us for uh, today's collective worship. Why was it that you visited Cyprus? Well, it was actually just a friend of ours who recommended the north of Cyprus as being very beautiful and a lot more quiet, that's not very good English, a lot quieter than the south. So we thought we would see what it was like. Very good. Now we in England have a special patron saint called St George and you in Scotland uh, have St Andrews. Does Cyprus have a special saint? Yes, indeed they do. It's St Barnabas. Is there a special place on the island where people go to remember him? And if so, have you visited it? I've actually visited the special place twice. It's near Salamis, which it was at the time of the Apostle Paul, a very big city in Cyprus. And there was many religions there. It's, it's a very special place. If I explain to you what it's like, it, it's, it's not inside the church. As I say, that's later. But the tomb is just a little, I think the Africans would call it a rondel, but it's, it's just a round building probably no wider than about eight feet. And right in the middle is a large hole. It's not a hole against the wall, it's a, a hole you look down into. And there are steps. The steps are in fact stone and you go down these steps very carefully and at the bottom, there is a tunnel. It's just like a normal tunnel, except it, it's only earth. And then when you get down, you travel along that tunnel until you come to a cut out bit in the wall. And in that bit in the wall, there is a flat stone. And that is Barnabas's burial place when the Jews chased Barnabas um, and, and they killed him, then they actually took him out to sea and dumped him in the sea, but his friends were close by and found the body and brought it back and buried it quietly without anybody else knowing and, and it, it lay there for a very long time before in fact it was found again. That's a very interesting story. What impact did your visit to the tomb uh, have on you? The wonderful thing for me was it, it was really thrilling to be taken back in time to when Barnabas and Paul preached in Samalus, Salamis and even being able to see the ruins of the Jewish synagogue that Paul had visited. And it reminded me of how accurate the Bible actually was in its descriptions. And it, it, what it gave me was the thought that so far we can't find anything in the Bible that has been disproved. It is God's word, and it is ever truthful. What would you dis What would you just say that Barnabas's legacy is to the world, not just to Cyprus, but but to the world in general? As a companion to Paul, 
he spread the good news of salvation far and wide. And I think that is his legacy, is that he did what the Lord Jesus Christ told them to do, told the disciples to do, was to go into the world and preach the good news, the gospel. And I think that's his legacy. He was the, the start, if you like, of, of going into other countries and preaching the gospel and setting up churches in these countries. It's interesting as well that there's been so many charities set up with the name of Barnabas as well. The, the name Barnabas means son of encouragement. And Barnabas seems to be one of those people that really encouraged and helped uh, other people, didn't he? Yes. The one thing you've got to remember is, of course, that Barnabas, firstly, he had believed in the Lord Jesus and he followed his example. Many even now follow his example and go as missionaries all over the world. But I, I think Barnabas was a man of insight. Barnabas was a man who in his own life proved that he could overcome problems and that he was always willing to help. That's great. Well, thanks very much for joining us and sharing us your experiences of uh, Barnabas's burial place and his home uh, island of Cyprus as well. Thank you. As we spoke about with David, the name Barnabas has become closely linked with serving and encouraging others. But in the early days of the church, he wasn't the only one who was doing that. On the day of Pentecost, Peter and the rest of Jesus' disciples told the crowds of Jerusalem how that the Lord Jesus had come. How that he had shown that he was from God by the remarkable things that he had done. How that he had given himself as a sacrifice by dying on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And how that on the third day he rose again to show that he is the Son of God and that he is the Saviour. Many people believed and the church was starting. There were so many people from all different kinds of backgrounds. There was men and women, there was young and there was old, there was rich and there was poor. The fact that some of the people were poor was a concern to others who were richer. And many of them sold things that they had and shared it with those who were poor. The historian who recorded the events, a man called Luke, put it like this. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. This wasn't just a short, quick thing either, but continued as the church grew. Listen to the amazing words that Luke writes a bit later on. There was not a needy person among them for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. He then goes on to record one particular person. I wonder, can you guess who that might be? That's right, it was Barnabas. Luke tells us this. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the Apostles Barnabas, because that name means son of encouragement, he was a Levite and he was a native of Cyprus. He sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the Apostles' feet. Luke writes more about Barnabas in his history of the early church, as Barnabas has a special place in encouraging the other Christians especially as the Christians spread into new places. Because although he was a Jew, and Jews didn't normally mix with non-Jews, who were also called Gentiles, do you remember that story about Jesus and the Samaritan woman 
Samaritan woman was so surprised that Jesus, being a Jew, came and spoke to her, who was a non-Jew. Well, Barnabas, he was one of the very first to go on long journeys to all different kinds of places to tell all different people about the Lord Jesus. Well, ever since that day, the name Barnabas has been linked with helping and supporting others. I wonder, perhaps you could do some research into somewhere in Grantham that is named after St. Barnabas. Try and find out whether the people who run that, whether they serve other people. But I wonder, could you do something that could encourage them as they serve others? The half-brother of the Lord Jesus sums it up well in the letter he wrote to Christians that is recorded in the Bible, the letter of James. He says this, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. In other words, if you truly believe in a God who cares enough to give, just like God gave his Son, the Lord Jesus, for us, if you believe in that person, then you will be willing to do the same. Another disciple, the one called John, put it like this. By this we know love, that he, the Lord Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. When he talks about brothers, he's talking about his fellow Christians. But if anyone has the world's goods, that is, is quite rich, or has, plenty, or has some money, uh, that is spare, and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? In other words, what he's saying is if you've got plenty, and you see that other people have need, and you profess that you love the God who loves to give, and yet you don't give, then he ends by asking this question, how does the love of God truly abide in that person? And so John encourages the people that he was writing to by saying this, Little children, let us not love in word or talk. In other words, don't just talk about loving people, but love in deed and in truth. Let us spend a moment just reflecting on some of these thoughts about Barnabas and service and how we can help other people. Now we're going to sing a song about praising God, but also about serving Him as well. Praise Him, uh, praise Him in the morning. Praise Him at the noontime, praise Him in the evening.
short prayer. Oh God, we give thanks that you are a loving and a giving God. We give thanks that those early Christians, and especially Barnabas, was known because they were willing to serve and to share. We give thanks for the example of the Lord Jesus, who gave so much for us. And we pray that as we see something and experience something of his love, that we will be willing to give to others as well. Encourage and help those who are serving each other. And we pray that you would bless them and help us. As we uh, ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been good to be able to speak to you again. Uh, thank you very much to David for speaking about his time on the island of Cyprus and his visit to Barnabas' tomb. Thank you to Abigail for camera work and for helping out. And from me, Mr. Buckridge, until next time, goodbye and take care.